Hello, this is Jamie and I am Barry. Now, as massive foodies, we love seeing what's new in the world of food. And today we're testing something interesting. Yeah, interesting. No, I know you know what, I'm, I'm pumped. You can lift that cloche, mate. Thanks, I will. What? Good start. <laughs> <laughs> I see rice pudding and I see Mr. Kipling cakes. We want to make it clear, there is no pressure to eat anything that's in front of you today. You've put food in front of me and now you've made me question whether I want to eat it or not. And I don't like it when people do that. Ooh. But it's very, very nice. Well, obvious. <laughs> you got any idea what might link the two? Is it a, an era? Sugar. Definitely in both. And you will see sugar on the ingredients list. Mm. Something else you might see on the ingredients list, it's cochineal. So it's ground up insects in their food colouring. Oh, okay. I've read about th that, but I didn't think it still existed. You might not see that on the label. It, you might see E120 or carmine. It doesn't necessarily bother me that they're in there. I'd just rather know that they're in there and then I can make my own choice whether I want to eat them or not. So today, we'd like you to taste test some alternate proteins in the form of bugs and insects. Entomophagy is the act of eating insects. But why is it such a hot topic right now? With the Earth's rising population set to hit 9 billion by 2050, experts are addressing how we're going to produce enough edible protein to feed us all. Evidence suggests that more farming and consumption of limited natural resources isn't going to work. So could edible insects help? Well, nutritionally speaking, crickets provide top quality protein high in essential amino acids and per 100 grams are richer in protein than chicken, pork and beef and the likes of edamame beans. Livestock rearing, especially beef, gives off large volumes of greenhouse gases, such as methane, whereas nearly 3,000 times less greenhouse gases are emitted from insect protein production per kilogram. Two billion of the world's population already consume insects as part of their diets. Perhaps we can learn something from them, but are we prepared to? I would like to think I'm prepared to. I'm off this. Carefully lift it. It's not going to run away when I lift it up, is it? Oh. You know what? I think I prefer it when I can see what I'm eating. And I don't know what's in that. Two delicious breakfast smoothies, both berry flavoured. Both of these smoothies contain powdered protein. This is a protein shake. Texture-wise, they both have oats in them, so they're, they're you know they're a they're a hearty smoothie. <laughs> I think Jamie's found the alternate protein <laughs> source. <laughs> That's not normal. I went in so confident on that <laughs> one, because that one was delicious. This one feels like there's something more nutty in it. Tastes like instead of putting oat in there, they've put a bit of soil in this one. The first one you tried has powdered soy protein. The other one, protein powder, but made from cricket protein. Cricket flour. Three times more protein than steak per 100 grams. Nine times more omega essential fatty acids than wild Alaskan salmon. More calcium than milk, more iron than spinach, and more B12 than beef. If that tasted nice, and you were told that it was cricket protein in it, would that stop you from drinking it or make a difference? No, it wouldn't stop me from drinking it at all. So that's not the barrier? It's the, the taste of that is not something that I can deal with. For me personally, quite hard work to drink anyway, because they're protein based, not fruit based. So not particularly useful to you in the world of protein shakes. Perhaps a different type of food. Give it a lift, mate. Ooh, homemade banana bread. That looks lovely. Okay, cheers. It's slightly more textured. I would say I'm getting banana, I'm getting some of the nuts, but I'm also getting something else that is muting the flavours of banana and nuts without adding its own thing to them. As well as the wholemeal flour, which is going to give it kind of a, a nuttiness and a bran-like taste, we've also got 25% cricket flour again, so exactly the same. Okay. But this time, rather than putting in a protein shake where you might expect to see protein, what about using cricket flour in cookies and baked goods where you're less likely to think of it as a protein option? I get it. In that, that really works. Now knowing that it's in there, I would question why you'd put cricket flour in, why, why you'd remove standard flour. If you're looking at this from a planet preservation perspective, where we're consuming less animals from farms, 
then maybe we'll be in a position where we start looking in other areas to get more protein from areas that we wouldn't do now. Chuck it in a cake. Chuck it in sweet goods where the flavour is going to get masked. This is an ingredient to be added to other things. I'd, eat, I'd drink a glass of milk, I'd eat a steak, and it's a complete different satisfaction you get out of it. Very open-minded so far. We're going to keep pushing the boundaries, mate. Oh, no. Some, there's something peeking out there. Have you battered some insects and put it with some sweet chilli dip? Is that a cockroach? No, that can't be a cockroach. Wood, the wood, wood louse. So these are <laughs> Thai red curry glutinous rice cakes with added insects. They are silkworm. Oh, silkworm. Pulpy. Are you prepared to eat it? Yeah, I'm prepared to eat it. Give anything a go once. <laughs> I said that, didn't I? Two billion people across the world, a third of the population, already eat insects as part of their daily diet or regular diet. It feels like you've added those for the sake of adding them. They haven't added anything to the dish in flavour or texture. The silkworm papaya are quite bitter. It's so about what we're used to. Take that into any pub and people will throw it out. Give them a bag of pork scratchings Deep fried pig skin. And they're the, like one of the best sellers. Next one, I know this is one of your favourite dishes. Oh, I can see him poking out. <laughs> is it like a mac and cheese? What we've done is taken out the pancetta yep. that might be in a mac and cheese yep. and substituted it for a different protein. These are mealworms. Correct. The bit, the, the bit, <laughs> it throws you purely because all your life you're grown up to react in one way and one way only when you see a bug in your food, which is put it down, run away and get your money back. Yeah, in this part of the world, whereas that is normal in many parts of the world. Hakuna Matata. Oh, <laughs> But we are making old <laughs> I thought they were dried, they were dried. They arrived live this morning. Oh God! That was unfair, but it, we did that purely scientifically for the lulls. <laughs> <laughs> These were sourced from a farm in uh, West London. They're, they're not alive, the ones in the mac and cheese. But a very, very sustainable, very, very ethical supply of edible protein that does a fraction of the damage to the planet. They've got a pop to them. And it's a pop of a little, a little bit of flavour that comes through. And it's not it doesn't taste just like the earth. And I think with some time, I could almost look forward to that. When we eat a steak, it does not look like a cow. And I think that's why it's so easy to remove that vision from your head. How do you feel about shrimp? Yeah, because you've just disproved my point. Fish is completely different. You eat a whole fish. So what do you think it would take for, in order for that to be, you to be able to order that in a restaurant? I reckon in some parts of London and some parts of probably LA, you might be able to order that soon. And I think it would be quite popular as long as you don't see that first. I'm intrigued what else you could do with these and how, where else you could take it within, within the realms of cooking. Um, and as an alternative protein source, the best tasting yet. So what we've done is taken you on a journey. We've gone non-visible, up to slightly visible, up to pretty visible, up to this is the final one. And remember, you don't have to eat it if you don't want to. I hate it when you do that sincere thing. Why did you have to put it looking at me? <laughs> he twisted it before we put the cloche down as well. In front of you, you have a water bug. This one is sold as ideal for jokes, pranks, and bush tucker trials. I'm expecting it to jump up at me any second. That's no, the, no, that's we're, the weird yeah. thing. I know, yeah. We're not inhumane, like this is no, dead. But, but again, eaten like this across different areas of the world. Barbecued, seasoned, spiced, salted. I've not done any of those for yours, but. <laughs> You don't have to eat it. You don't even have to put it near your mouth. But if it helps, there's something on your left that might be a good dip. Chocolate. You've eaten chocolate dip. It feels like it's too big for a mouthful. I can't work out what's worse, eating the body or the head. There's no pressure whatsoever. But I also know that Jamie's doing this at the same time. Right, there's the other one. Well, cheers. Are you dunking? I'm not going to dunk. You're not going to dunk? No. How's this happened? <laughs> 
Hakuna Matata. What a wonderful phrase. Very, very dry. Like I can't swallow it. You know when you're wrapping presents, when you bite the, the sellotape, and you get a bit of sellotape in your mouth, you're like, it's like that. But lots of little bits. <laughs> That's a very good analogy. I think everyone at some point in their life has done that. Probably need some more. Mm -hmm. that. <laughs> there were times when I felt like I bit into another part and it felt like it released something which yeah, wasn't Yeah, I had pleasant. a bit of that. It wasn't pleasant to eat, it was very dry. Thank you for that, mate. No, that's right. Thank you. Thank you. I like it when insects are involved to add um, either aesthetic or flavour or texture to a dish. Um, I am not so fussed about the protein, but I understand the growing demand of alternative proteins. Um, and I can see how it could be put into dishes to add to it. I don't think you'll ever be able to convince the world to turn vegan. At the same time, I don't think you're ever going to fully convince the world to eat bugs. But what's important about this whole video is to have, have a conversation about it because we'd be idiots having this platform without addressing at least the topic and subject matter, especially as we've got so many of you guys who watch so fervently with so much more information, we should be talking about this. Did he do it? He ate half and he went for the bun first. Covered in chocolate. I think I've still got it in my teeth. As you can tell, that was very new to us and it's absolutely fascinating, which is why we wanted to keep talking about it downstairs in the comments and on the community tab, because we want to know what you think. Do you already eat insects? Is it an interesting topic to you? Do you care at all? Would you give them a go if you haven't already? Comment down below, let us know. If you're new around here or if you've been around for a while and you just haven't bothered to push that subscribe button, then why not do it now? It's Dad Joke of the Week. Is that the tune? <laughs> That's, That's not right, is it? Near enough the tune. Yeah. 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 Why do cows have hooves? Okay, it's gonna be a good one. Because they lack toes. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. good yeah. joke, good joke. Relevant part, yeah. as well. As we mentioned, Sorted is just run by a group of friends. So if you like what we're doing, then there are loads of ways that you can support us and get more involved. Everything you need to know is linked below. Thanks and see you in a few days. Wasn't he the baddie in, in uh, Men in Black 2? <laughs> yeah, he was. He was, wasn't he? He was. <laughs>